miscommunicate and understand each other. That's why uh, space artificial intelligence is very important. So I would like to ask uh, to invite uh, Aisha, so to please to enlighten us uh, on this uh, uh, AI in space and why it is so, 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 so much needed. You cannot do a uh, space exploration without AI. So please, Aisha, she's, uh, uh, she's a research assistant at the Meteor Center and also at uh, the Space Artificial Intelligence Lab. Uh, she has been with us with, uh, for more than three years. So we thank her for choosing us. Okay, hopefully she will not divorce us. Okay, because uh, whatever, so, so many things do happen as we move on, inshallah. Okay, so please, Aisha, take the stage. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Dr. Elias, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us here today. Uh, today's talk will be a light, short presentation, inshallah. I'll be uh, describing what the world has done in terms of uh, utilizing AI applications for space exploration. But before beginning, I want to make this presentation a bit engaging. So I want to hear from you. Uh, what do you think or what came to mind when you saw the title of this uh, talk, AI and Space Exploration? In order to hear from you, can you please go to menti.com and enter the code you see right here? I'll also go with you to make sure everything is working. So you'll get a screen asking you to enter the code. Yes, we see the screen. All right, did you input your answers? Yes. Okay, let me reload. Okay, rovers, robots, what else? Any more inputs? All right. Okay, so mainly the idea that uh, everyone gets is robots, robots once we say artificial intelligence, which is partly true, and, uh, but there are other things as well. So before beginning, we have to define some concepts. So in general, artificial intelligence is an area of computer science. It emphasizes the creation of intelligent machines that work and act or react like humans. So basically the term comprises all techniques that enable computers to mimic human intelligence. AI is based on three cognitive skills, such as learning processes. So it acquires data and creates rules for how to turn the data into actionable information. So the robot, when it sees some kind of data, for example, something it perceives, how to act accordingly. And there's also the reasoning process, which means choosing the right algorithm or choosing the right reaction uh, to the uh, given situation. And self-correction processes, which means continually fine tune algorithms and ensure they provide the most accurate results possible. So there are several branches of AI. We have robotics. I think you recognize Sophia, the robot. There is also expert systems and, of course, machine learning, which is a subfield of AI and a subfield of machine learning. We have deep learning, which utilizes artificial neural networks. I'll explain them in a bit. And natural language processing, which is mainly concerned with speech recognition and also fuzzy logic, which determines if, a, if the answer is yes or no, depending on the situation. So I'll briefly explain what machine learning is. Um, its major focus is to extract information from a given data. Uh, subfield of it is deep learning. It is an AI function and a machine learning technique that teaches computers to learn by example. And it mimics the workings of the human brain. It utilizes artificial neural networks, which are algorithms inspired by our brain to learn from large amounts of data and this is an example of how such neural networks work. So this is an image of a spiral galaxy. The purple nodes um, resemble the input nodes. And then we have the hidden layers. Those are responsible for extracting features from these images. And then we finally have an output saying that it's a spiral galaxy. Again, a brief uh, explanation about neural networks because we'll come back to them uh, later in a way. So they are... Uh, 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 recall that deep learning is a subject of machine learning where ANNs are used, All right? So they are intended to replicate the way, the way that we learn and think. 
and they consist of input and output layers as well as hidden layers. However, CNNs are slightly different. Uh, they are made up of something called a convolution unit. This is a combination of two functions that produce a third function. Mainly it takes um, features of the picture, some abstract features, and then it comes up with a result. And this is when we write the code, this is how we put it. So in order not to repeat myself, I uh, went into some detail in January 18. I spoke about machine learning to, to some detail and uh, its applications in astronomy. So if you're interested in that talk, please go to YouTube and you can find it there. Today we'll mainly focus on things that we did not cover before. So let's move on to the uh, robotics, the main branch of uh, AI, which is the, the main talk of today. Robotics is a domain in artificial intelligence that deals with the study of creating intelligent and efficient robots. The objective of creating those robots is to manipulate objects by perceiving, by picking, moving, modifying the physical properties of objects, perhaps even destroying it or to have an effect, thereby freeing manpower from doing repetitive tasks. There are several aspects of robotics, mainly mechanical construction, of course, we need to build something. We need electrical components, some kind of uh, circuits, uh, resistors, and also a computer program. So this reflects the different fields where research assistants uh, can, help, can help us in building such kind of uh, robots. We move on to a uh, example of a robot that is used in the International Space Station known as Simon. Simon is developed and built by Airbus for the German Aerospace Center, uh, Aerospace Center and Space Administration, DLR. It uh, supports astronauts and increases the efficiency of their work. So it, ables, uh, so it is able to show and explain information and instruction for scientific experiments and repairs. Simon 1, uh, this is the picture of uh, Simon with the developers. Uh, Simon 1 flew on board uh, on uh, July 2018 until August 2019. Shortly after that, once it came back to Earth, Simon 2 was sent again to the International Space Station in December 2019. As you can see, this is somewhat uh, very recent. Those are new technologies that are yet uh, to be developed. They are now um, like prototypes. So Simon 2 had more sensitive microphones. It had advanced uh, sense of ori orientation because it moves by itself uh, in a place where there is no gravity. So imagine how tough that must be. And there are other enhancements as well. Uh, it is said that Simon's name is uh, after Professor Simon White and the robotic, uh, the robotic assistant or flying brain from the Japanese science fiction, science fiction series Captain Future, if you know it or Faris al-Fada in Arabic. Um, so this is where the name came from. And here we can see a video of how Simon reacts um, to human questions and orders. Let me know if you can hear. Simon, what? Can you hear? Were you able to hear? Yes. OK, great, thank you. What can you do for me? We can do skill training with the Lucas Cube, or do some other cognitive training by playing games. I can assist you with instructions for the experiment and act as a mobile camera. Simon, move to BioLab. Drew, moving to the BioLab. So Simon takes some time until it reaches the BioLab, but still, that's uh, an advancement in uh, technology and in spe especially in the space industry. Another example is. Simon. Robonaut 2, there was uh, Robonaut 1. Robonaut 1 did not have uh, legs, but Robonaut 2 uh, legs were added to this uh, uh, robot. And there's also Skybot F850. The uh, Robonaut is by NASA, while the other one is by the Russian Space Agency. I emphasize on one and two because when developing something, there's always a beginning, there's always a prototype stage. We cannot get things right from the very first uh, try. This is why it is essential to see uh, the steps those uh, projects go through. Another, um, before moving to another example, the, the, main as the main reason for having such robots, especially in the uh, International Space Station 
or even here on ground is to work alongside the astronauts or researchers or take and uh, take on tasks that are too risky for them or tasks that are uh, very time consuming. So it aims to free up the crew for more critical work, including scientific research, if we are talking about um, outer space. There's another robot known as uh, Daphne. Daphne is not the Daphne from Scooby-Doo, if, you, if, you, if you've watched Scooby-Doo before, but Daphne is an intelligent assistant for architecting Earth observing satellite systems. So it helps the um, designers or engineers to how uh, develop a suitable satellite system. This is how Daphne looks like. It, is, um, it has a front end and a back end. So the front end basically is a graphical user interface, which has user uh, uh, visual, web visual interface, as well as voice interface and physical embodiment. So here we recall the three aspects of a robot. Uh, this is the uh, mechanical aspect. This is the, the, the middle one is the computer program. And the, the third one as well, but this also en encompasses another branch of AI, which is natural language processing for speech recognition. So this makes us realize that the branches of AI do not work in isolation. They all work together and uh, to an extent serve the same purpose. As for the back end, there is the critique module and the analyst module. There's also the data mining model. This runs machine learning algorithms on the data set. That is used by having a deep learning model, which is based on a convolutional neural network, which is used to classify the input into, do, into two different categories when we talk about spe um, the voice interface. So it classifies the input into questions or commands and here is the role of Daphne because Daphne is an analyst and the question answering system at the same time, it is also a critique agent. So it uh, criticizes the system developed by the uh, engineers and it answers questions if uh, asked uh, by any. So Daphne is used by systems engineers and satellite design teams. It makes their job easier by providing access to relevant information, including feedback, as well as answers to specific queries. So that was it for robots. There are many similar kind of robots which are uh, being developed at the moment. Uh, we move on to another example. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to, um, we, can, we can see that this is a branch of machine learning or an application of uh, machine learning, which is the discovery of Kepler-90i planet. It is a hot rocky planet that orbits its star once every 14.4 days. This was discovered by the NASA's Kepler Space Telescope. Just a side note, Kepler, Kepler is the name behind uh, or after the uh, German astronomer, Johannes Kepler, who died in 1630. Um, basically, a machine learning algorithm was trained to learn how to identify exoplanets in the light readings recorded by Kepler. So basically the minuscule change in the brightness captured when a planet passes in front of a or transits in front of a star. The data set that was used was Kepler's four year data set, which consisted of 35,000 possible planetary signals. This video demonstrates how such kind of things work. Moving on to other projects, this is a project um, regarding NASA asteroid classification. So basically it aims to classify whether an asteroid is hazardous or not. There is a huge data set about asteroids on uh, Kaggle and on different websites which are concerned about uh, asteroids. And this could be a potential project that SAST can work on given that we work on meteorites, we work on meteors, and maybe we can go further and work on asteroids. So the data set of this project comprised of uh, several inputs, such as the Near-Earth near Object Reference ID, 
its name, its absolute magnitude, distances in kilometers and meters, uh, relative velocity, the orbiting body, the eccentricity, the semi-major axis, the orbital period, the distances, as well as the hazardous input. This feature denotes whether the asteroid is hazardous or not. How do we decide on that? Uh, we do so by determining the mean of the diameter of the asteroid. This, of course, is as per this project, the one I'm explaining at the moment. Some inputs can vary depending uh, on our objective. They trained their model using different machine learning architectures or uh, different machine learning algorithms. They, they used naive Bayes classifier, but it failed. Support vector machine also failed. However, the decision tree uh, succeeded. It reached an accuracy of 99.4%. They also used light gradient boosting machine, which also uh, succeeded. There was a competition by NASA, NASA Space App Challenge, and uh, one of the winners was Deep Asteroid Application. So it was able to predict possible impact of a hazardous asteroid. However, it seems that this application is not out there in the market yet, but this is, this is a great indicator that there are many projects that are um, happening in this field specifically related to asteroids. Moving on to other projects, there is the PhiSat1. This is a CubeSat which has an AI chip that filters images. So the CubeSat takes images of visible, near infrared and thermal infrared images. Those are captured by the CubeSat in a way that only usable data uh, are returned, meaning that images covered with clouds will be filtered using AI algorithms. If I recall, this PhiSat 1 will be launched by 2025 uh, or 2023, if I remember correctly. The second project is Clear Space 1. This is, the, this is considered the first space mission to remove an item of debris from orbit. This is the one that is planned uh, for launch in 2025. I believe those two projects are by the uh, European Space um, Agency. In this project, the second one, the team of researchers aim to develop deep learning algorithms to reliably estimate the 60 pose of the target from the video sequences. So it aims to teach those algorithms which are instilled in the, in the or deployed uh, in the robots or the system which has some kind of arms to do so on how to rot rotate or act accordingly to uh, accomplish its purpose. Another project is the whole mergers. This is uh, used, uh, this is done by artificial intelligence and supercomputers. So a model is created to predict what's left after a black hole merger, as we can see in the second picture. Uh, meaning that the proper properties of the final black hole, such as its spin and mass. This, these are all new projects. The one that I have went over, um, they started in 2019, some of them uh, in 2020. In fact, there are still no updates about those projects. And I think this happened because of the uh, pandemic. Some things uh, were postponed and hence no updates regarding those projects were there online. So this was about the general projects, which uses robotics and machine learning for space applications. Of course, they are not limited to that. There are plenty, but those are the ones which I found uh, most relevant. And some of them, which we at SAST can start uh, to apply and learn from those projects. Coming to what we do at SAST, uh, we're working on machine learning algorithms for two different purposes. I've previously talked about them, but for the new audience, this is for you. So as part of the Meteorite Center, we have a unit dedicated for machine learning in order to uh, recognize meteorites from terrestrial rocks. Meteorites are those rocks which, which land on Earth. When they are in the sky, we call them meteors, or you may know them as shooting stars, but when they fall, we call them meteorites. 
So in order to do so, we have a data set and we've done this on two phases. The first phase we used meteorites from the encyclopedia of meteorites. And for not meteorites, we uh, just used the search results from Google uh, of rocks, land and, des and uh, desert. <clears throat> However, in phase two, we had our own collection as you can see in the pictures here. This is considered the largest meteorite connection, uh, collection in the region. And if you want to see it, you can visit us at SAST and see uh, this wonderful collection. For model training, this also happened in two phases. The first phase was Lynette. I mean, we used the Lynette architecture, which is considered a shallow architecture, but it's a great architecture to start with. And then we used MobileNet v2, Inception v3, and the deployment was on Raspberry Pi 3, which is a small computer. However, this uh, computer, some of the architectures were quite heavy. Therefore, in phase two, we opted for another uh, processor, which is the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Uh, additionally, in phase two, uh, we had different architectures. We, we kept Linet, but we also added Adeli. Adeli was... Uh, they had this uh, al algorithm or deep learning model to see to see if there are rocks in a given patch or, uh, or meteorites. However, in their model, they did not train it on how to differentiate between rocks or meteorites just to identify if there's an object in a given patch, specifically with a sandy, sandy background. There's also ResNet 50 and LXNet architectures and um, this is mainly the difference between phase one and phase two. Coming to the model testing, for phase one, the best accuracy was 89%. This was reached by mobile net v2. And for phase two, the best accuracy was reached by Adeli, by the uh, model of those uh, researchers who developed this algorithm to detect a um, an object on a sandy background. However, in our case, our data set was different from them because we had meteorites and not meteorites. For deployment, we used the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. This is how a small computer or a processor looks, looks like. Uh, a compatible camera is attached to it, and then a drone carries those two, and it scans a given area in the desert. Another thing that we do is object detection using YOLO for identifying meteors. YOLO means you only look once, and it's a architecture which, which is aimed for um, object detection. I've uh, previously spoke about this and explained the architecture, so please feel free to visit um, the YouTube lecture, which talks about machine learning applications in astronomy. So here we have the picture of one of the towers from, from the uh, UAE Meteor Monitoring Network. This project is funded by the UAE Space Agency we started working on it since September 2018. Up until now, we have observed more than 32,000 meteors. So we have two more of those uh, towers. Uh, the first one, this one is at the Academy here in Sharjah. The second one is in Al Yahar in Al Ain, and the third one is in Liwa in Abu Dhabi. And the main purpose of those towers is to monitor meteors or space debris in the UAE sky from sunset to sunrise. So those are the examples of uh, meteors we observe from those towers. And here are not meteors. You can see here we have a dotted line. Sometimes this is represented by an airplane passing by. And sometimes we have a cloudy, cloudy skies. And sometimes we have just some sort of noise. Sometimes we have birds. Sometimes we have insects and so on. So the system captures anything that moves. Therefore, we need something to help us filter out or automate the process of um, filtering out the images which contain meteors uh, or not meteors and keeping the images which contain meteors. We did that by having or developing a YOLO algorithm. And those are the results. As you can see in the first picture, we have a meteor. And the model was able to correctly classify it as a meteor uh, with an accuracy reaching 75%. In the second picture, we have a meteor and not meteor. This is the a camera in front of the camera. So it managed to recognize it as not meteor. 
which is wonderful. And it was able to, see, to say that this is a meteor. I hope you can see my cursor. And then in the last image, we have some sort of noise. And we can see that the model was able to uh, say or reach a conclusion that uh, it is not a meteor. So here we can see the difference between uh, object detection and image classification. Because an image classification, it would classify the whole image, but in object detection, it would classify the targeted object and draws those bounding boxes on it. With this, uh, I conclude this very short and light talk, but before ending, I also want to hear from you again, how do you think SAST can utilize AI for space exploration? So please, if you can go to menti.com and enter the code here, I would love to see your answers. Thank you very much, uh, Aisha. So thank you very much. I believe you can check the chat. Uh, there are several mm -hmm. questions for you. Okay, we'll do that. All right. Okay. What does absolute magnitude mean? In simple words, yes, and it means the brightness of the object. I think this was when I was talking about the, the exoplanets or perhaps the asteroids. Uh, uh, usually, uh, usually we use absolute because when you look at, let's say, just get to when you observe stars, when you observe stars, you see what you call the apparent, and you cannot compare stars using the apparent magnitude. Uh, what we do, so uh, we use this absolute magnitude, which is uh, if you can put all the stars at the same distance from us, let's say 10 parsec, what you will be measuring is the absolute magnitude, and you can compare them because now they are all at the same distance. So it is just a value to tell you that you can use to compare uh, objects, especially stars. Uh, now they are, now they are, they, that they are on this virtual uh, sphere at about 10 parsec, uh, 10 par parsec, just a unit of distance, which is about 3.26 light years. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Elias. Um, Yes, Meta answered. I believe absolute magnitude is a measure of the actual luminosity of a celestial object. Thank you, Meta. Professor Mashur uh, confirmed that. Thank you. Did you develop the data set yourself or used a ready labeled data set for which project? In our case, we have the data set for meteorites and meteors only. The rest of the projects were uh, conducted elsewhere in the world. If we don't have accurate data, can we use AI in that application field? Can you elaborate on your question? If we don't have accurate data, can we use AI? You can simulate data. You can have, uh, you, you can synthesize data. Uh, there's another question. When you mentioned computer programming, what language do you mainly use? Mainly we use Python for uh, machine learning or AI. Not, not li limited to Python, but uh, Python is kind of uh, the most popular at the moment. Meteor object detection. Yes, uh, yes, we have our own data set, which you can see here. I think those are the questions. Um, not sure may I, may yeah. I ask a question? So sure. for the object detection, you're using CNNs, convolutional yes. networks. So are you considering to maybe in order to improve the uh, performance to use uh, graph neural networks, which is quite new to the field, but um, I guess it would give a better performance if you try that. Right. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Uh, we'd love to try that, of course. Anything to improve accuracy and have better performance. Thank you, Meta. Thank you for your presentation. It was very good. Thank you. Anything else? Any other question? Any other question, please, from the group? Anything else to add, Aisha? That's it. 
Okay, so thank you uh, for attending our uh, bi-weekly uh, bi lecture. Uh, so uh, this coming two weeks, we're going to have uh, some good programs. We are going to celebrate the International Day of Astronomy. Uh, we are going to celebrate uh, the, International Day, the International Day of Light. Uh, we're also to have a workshop on galaxies, uh, and all of this will be advertised. And hopefully, you'll be participating with us in these uh, beautiful programs. So uh, thank you again, Aisha, for this very nice presentation. We thank you a lot. So you don't refuse what we request for you to do. Thank you, thank you uh, very much. And again, uh, I would like to thank the audience for participating, for asking questions and so on. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.